Hello everyone. In last class, we have discussed how to minimize an automata. The very first condition which we have discussed that the automata must be a deterministic finite automata. So before minimizing, we need to ensure that the given automata must be deterministic. If it is non-deterministic, we know how to convert into deterministic automata. So I am taking in this uh, lecture another example and try to convert into the minimal automata, right? So let's minimize this particular automata. This automata, if you want to check whether it is minimized uh, deterministic or not, then you can check every state. So A is the initial state, right? 0, 1, there are two transactions. So unique transaction for transition for 0, unique transition for 1, similarly on B, similarly on C, similarly on D, 1 transition for 0, 1 for 1, similarly on E, similarly on F and G. So that means it is deterministic, unique transition, the table is also given, every, each and every shell is having only single entry, single state, you are moving, no phi entry, no multiple entries, it is a DFA. Now, if you want to convert this, you need to find out the equivalence classes. So, 0 equivalence, 1 equivalence, 2 equivalence and so on. Until and unless we start getting the repeated classes, right? So, let's write a 0 equivalence class. So, let's say pi 0, if we write pi 0 means all the final states we will put in one group. All non-final we will be separated out into one group. So, let's say A is a non-final state, B is also a non-final, C is also a non-final, D is also a non-final and E is also non-final state. Another set we will prepare where F and G, these two are final. So these states are in zero equivalence. Without passing any input, any non-final state will be at non-final only. And any final state will be at final only. So there are two sets, right? Now if we try to find out the one equivalence, when we pass one length input on let's say A, whether it is behaving similar to B or not, that we are checking. So when we are passing 0 on A, it is leading us to B. And when we are passing 0 to B, it is leading us to D. So B and D, we need to check on 0 equivalence whether B and D are belonging in same set. Yes, B and D are belonging in same set. Let us check for 1. A is leading us to C for 1 input. B is leading us to E for 1 input. So C and E are also belonging in the same set. That means A and B will be the part of same set or you can say it is in one equivalence because they are leading us to same set. Now if we check C, whether C is belonging to the same set or not. So C is leading us to F and G. C is leading us to F and G. F and G does not belong in this set where A and B are leading. So C must be in the different set. C cannot be the, in the same set where A and B are existing because they are not in the one equivalence. Right? Then let's check for D. So D is leading us to D and E for 0 and 1. And D and E both are belonging in this set. So you can say D is belonging in this set. And D is in the one equivalence with A and B. Right? Now let's check for E. E is leading us to F and G similar to C, so E will be in one equivalence of C. Now what about F and G, so let's check for F and G whether they are in one equivalence or not. F is leading us to D and E and G is leading us to F and G. D and E both are belonging in this set, they are non-final and F and G are belonging in this set, so they cannot be in equivalence, so they will be separated out. F will belong in different set, G will belong in different set because they are in, they are not in one equivalent, one equivalent, right? Now let's calculate the two equivalence class. So if you check A and B, A is leading us to B and B is leading us to D and B and D are belonging in the same set, okay? Now A is leading us to C and B is leading us to E and C and E are belonging in the same set. That means A and B are in two equivalence class. I hope it is clear, right? Now let's check for D. 
D is leading us to D E, right? D for zero and E for one. So D for zero and E for one, same behavior like A and B, right? So that means D will also be in the same set, and D will be in two equivalence with A and B state. Now let's check for C and E. C is leading us to F and G, and E is also leading us to F and G. That means an F and G are belonging like F and G. They are separated, but the same behavior C and E are reflecting. So that means they will be in the same set. F and G cannot be further separated out because they are already having one one state. So that means we get the repeated one. So one equivalence. Now we got is equal to two equivalence. That means no further division is required. Now we can draw. A new automata that will be the minimized DFA. So if we combine A, B, D, so let's say if I am having A, B, and D class, let's say we are combining, we are making this is one class and this will be initial because A was initial, right? Another class we are having, let's say uh, C, E. So let's say we are drawing here C and E class. This is, will be non-final. F and G was final, so let's say if I have F here, this is a final one. And G, let's say I am having here, and G is also final, right? Now let's draw the transaction. So A B D is leading us. A is leading us B for zero, and B is belonging to the same class, right? Similarly, B is leading us to D. D is in the same class. And D is leading us for D. D is here, so that means for zero there is a loop on A B D. I hope it is very easy to understand. Then for one, when one is coming on A, one is coming. It is leading us to C. C is belonging in this. When B is taking one input, it is leading to E, and E is also belonging here. When D is taking one, it is also leading to E. So that means for one, this will lead us to this. Class, right? Now let's check for C. C lead us to F and G, and E also lead us to F and G. So that means zero, it will be on F. For zero, it will be on F. So let's say for zero, it is leading us to F, and for one, C is leading us to G, right? So for zero, it is leading us to F, and here it is leading us to G for one, right? So I hope it is clear. Now for F, we write the transaction for F. On F, when zero is coming, it is on F only. So there is a self loop for zero. On F. No, no. There is not a self loop. F is here. So for F, it is leading you to D, and D is belonging in A B D. So that means you are leading here, right? So you are F to A B D. You are going when you are taking input zero. Okay. Then on F, when you are taking input as one, it is leading you to E, and E is in this class. So that means when one is coming, you can go from here to let's say this class. Okay, you are going here like this. I can write here as one. Now on G, so when G is taking zero, it is on F. So it is coming this side. For zero, it is leading towards. F and for one, G is having a self loop. For one, there is a self, loop. right? So this is the minimized DFA for this given DFA. I hope these example will help you to understand how to minimize an automata. Okay. So thank you everybody. I am closing this. See you in the next class.